Hey guys, it's Jay Bear from Convince and Convert, and welcome to episode four of Marketing Marvels, where I help you discover new technology to help you become a better marketing professional. Each and every episode of Marketing Marvels includes an overview and a quick demo of cutting edge marketing software that I personally recommend and endorse. Only stuff that I use and stuff that I love I bring to you on Marketing Marvels. And if you've got questions, you can leave them in the comments after the show. Either I'll answer them or our special guest will answer your questions as well about the technology. Today's special guest on Marketing Marvels Episode 4 is the Chief Marketing Officer of a fantastic company called Workfront. He is the one and only Joe Staples. Joe, welcome to the show. Thanks, Jay. Great to be here. Thanks for that great intro. We are delighted to have you. And Workfront is such an interesting and valuable tool because it really is a whole suite of tools. It's a combination of multiple different things that we'll look at here just a little bit in the demo. And if you are an organization that's creating a lot of marketing execution, so a lot of ads, a lot of digital ads, a lot of ebooks, a lot of webinars, even a lot of videos, or a lot of social media posts, it's really hard to track all that stuff, right? You got some sort of crazy calendar and you got Google Docs or Excel or some nonsense like that. Plus, then you got to figure out how to get everybody's comments and do collaboration. Workfront takes all of those things and puts them in one tool. So you can do calendaring, you can do collaboration, you can store your own images and pull them in quickly and easily. You can get approvals. We love it at Convince and Convert. We love uh, using Workfront to, to kind of collaborate amongst ourselves and create great content like the Marketing Marvels show, ironically. So I, I want to get right into the demo and have Joe show you what it looks like because there's lots of really cool features that I want to make sure you get a chance to see. So Joe, take it away. Let me uh, turn up the demo here. Good. Thanks, Jay. I, I think your description was exactly right on with what most marketing teams experience. It's kind of chaotic. It's email, spreadsheets, Google Docs, all these things kind of flying in and around from all kinds of uh, different request spots and how do, you, how do you control that chaos? And that's really what Workfront does. It provides some organization and structure around those things that allows you to do your best creative work. So uh, to, to do this, we're going to kind of show you what uh, a number of different people using Workfront would experience. Jay, you talked about the fact that it's a suite of products, and we're going to show you three main components to that suite. So we're going to start by logging in as Conrad Hilton. So Conrad's going to be the requester in our demo this morning. So he's got a, a request, and that request could be coming from inside the marketing team, it could be somebody from the sales team, it could be a field marketer that's making a request of our creative services team. So he logs in, and uh, in this instance, he's going to make a request for a, for a, a change to the website, uh, something that he wants new on the web website. So he's going to fill out the creative brief associated with that request. And so you can see there were a number of things for him to choose from, but he's going to give it a subject and uh, go through and look at you know other pieces when he when he needs this to go live, all the things that you would think of in a creative brief that needs to be there so that the person doing the work would know exactly what's being asked of them. He shows where on the website it's going to be found, um, suggests some dimensions. Uh, if he's got some ideas on copy, he could put it in there. But in this case, he says, hey, you guys can decide. You know this business pretty well. He then submits his request. So for Conrad, this is great because he knows that this isn't going to be lost in a barrage of emails. It's going to be received by the team that does the work into this single location. So next, uh, let's take a look at Joan Harris. And in this case, Joan is... Uh, the, the project manager or the traffic manager sometimes she's called and she uses Workfront to track all of her projects in one location. So kind of a single source of truth here. And she fields incoming requests. She has a dashboard entitled New Requests so she can see what hasn't been assigned out yet. And that helps her identify that uh, incoming work. So she's going to convert this new request from Conrad into a project. And she's going to use the banner template because that's what uh, it fits into as she sees the request. 
because they've done other banners in the past. And so this sort of just takes that same kind of project plan and, and applies it to the new work. Exactly. So using whatever template or whatever shortcut there might be uh, so that she doesn't have to, or the, the person doing the work doesn't have to start from scratch. Yeah. And then she's going to assign users to the project, uh, and she's going to kind of assess their availability and their skill set in doing this. So she looks and says, OK, I, I need a copywriter on it, uh, uh, because uh, the, the request from Conrad didn't give me any help there. I need a designer, so I'm going to assign those two people to it. I know uh, how long Does she have the ability, have the ability to determine um, sort of the, the availability of, of those uh, individuals to say, yeah, this person's got capacity or this person doesn't have capacity? She is, and the way she does that is she has the opportunity to look at what their workload is. So as a tool to be able to kind of balance staffing, uh, it really provides an opportunity, as we're going to show you real quickly here, to see who yeah. might staff members are, what they're working on, how many hours are actually already committed. Uh, so the ability to, you know, so often inside of a marketing team, you've got a staff of designers, let's say there's six designers, and one of them's pulling out their hair going, you know, I can't deal with all and of it. Everybody this. else is sitting around. I know, it's the <laughs> worst. Life's great. <laughs> now, what are you talking about? Life's great. And, and this, this particular feature we haven't used at Convince to Convert, and I know our uh, operations uh, director is is uh, metaphorically licking her chops uh, at this. Right. This right. I think the other thing that you know the downside of this is what happens when you don't have this visibility is you pick the you pick the best person because you know so and so always delivers for me, and what you end up doing is burning out that person. Uh, and not really developing the other people. So this really gives Joan this ability to look across the team, see who's working on what, see who has what availability, and then make the assignments based on that. Yeah, really good point. Do you, uh, do you find that, that this particular piece of it is very useful for, for agencies that are creating a lot of stuff for, for multiple clients? Yeah, we, we've got a lot of agencies. It, it might be the biggest growth area for our business. Uh, yeah. Just because uh, you know they have so much coming in and going out, and the faster they can produce work, the the better their margins are going to be because they're going to yeah. get better utilization of their people. So the ROI for an agency is really really strong. All right, let's jump over and look at uh, we'll look at David White. David's the creative director and. He, his role kind of in, inside of Workfront is to understand what his team members are working on and to manage new assignments to his team. So he's got the ability to manage really any type of workflow methodology. Um, most marketing teams today tend to operate inside of a waterfall methodology. We're seeing a really big uptick on people adopting Agile, uh, you know, traditionally done by IT groups, uh, but uh, some really strong benefits to this Agile methodology. And in the Agile uh, thesis, the idea is you work on a few projects for, for a short period of time, but put a lot of emphasis on a small number of projects and say, this is what we're going to accomplish collectively this week. Instead of saying, this project's going to take us 50 days, you're saying, what are we doing in the next five business days? Uh, and then continuing to refresh that list. Um, it, it's, it's fascinating to me having been involved on both sides of it, um, I suspect that that getting somebody inside a marketing organization or an agency organization um, to, to sort of understand and lead the agile methodology has to be a big change because most most marketers have always been trained by a waterfall, what's next on the to-do list kind of uh, concept, and, and agile is quite different from that. And so are you finding people... Uh, who are who are traditional marketing project managers and just training them in Agile, or are you sort of pulling people in from the software development industry and saying, "Hey, we'd like to teach you how to make marketing stuff"? Yeah, I think I think the former is the easier route, and certainly the ones uh, that we're seeing most often with our customers. So they're taking marketing teams, creative directors, and they're learning an Agile methodology. Yeah. And we provide a number of webinars and white papers and and trainings and workshop. Uh, around this, but you bring up the point around sprints, and sprints really is kind of a you know a core component to this, and there are a number of pieces 
to that agile methodology, but sprints allow you to be so much more flexible in the work that you take on and the prioritization. You're so much more uh, often working on the right stuff because you're focused inside of this uh, either week-long sprint. We have some people that run two-week sprints. Uh, instead of mapping out this work for months at a time and then some Thing in months and you go, yeah, sorry, get it, get it at the end of the line. I can do that in September. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, just great benefits to this, and, and we're really seeing some, some nice adoption. So in this case, you know, David's got the opportunity to uh, see what his team is working on. This is a burn-down chart. Uh, he can see how the latest iteration is progressing as they work through their sprint, or they can hit their dates. He's got much... Uh, improved visibility relative to the performance of the team. All right, let's go over to the guy that does all the work. So this is Rick, and Rick is the graphic designer. So like most creatives, they, they went to school to be a, a designer because that's what they like to do. And oftentimes they can go, wait, 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 uh, structure, uh, process, you know, they view that as a as kind of <laughs> arch enemy of creativity. and and it's really not. Uh, what we found is that it, the more structure there can be around work. So for example, if Rick gets all of his work requests in a single location, he's got more time to be creative, to do those things that, that he wants to do. Uh, but the other thing, an, another interesting thing about most designers is they don't like going into a bunch of different applications, kind of breaks their creativity. And so uh, they like staying inside of that design tool. So for Rick, uh, we've done an integration that he uses between Workfront and the Adobe Creative Cloud. So he is able to just, from inside of Photoshop, uh, click over and log into Workfront. That's really the only distinction that he sees. And then everything else that he does is inside of that uh, Adobe Creative Cloud in this case. So Rick's already been working on this particular asset, so he's ready to upload it uh, to Workfront. In the Workfront extension, he's going to choose which task he's been working on. He'll upload the graphic asset to that task to be reviewed and commented on. And he can choose what type of file he wants it to be and what he should call it as he exports it out to Workfront. Again, he's working inside of Photoshop, but the people that are proofing or approving this aren't necessarily. So that's why that, that link is so important, because these other people will go inside of Workfront to, to, to finish out their part. So this will automatically generate a proof, because Rick, Rick is a proofing user. And again, he only leaves the Creative Cloud to mark his task complete and then he's going to move on to his next task, again, staying inside of the Creative Cloud. And he'll get he'll that next task. He'll get assigned to him based on what's going on. Exactly. Yep. There will be a, a queue for him, uh, most likely determined at the beginning of, the, of their weekly sprint. So you talked, uh, Jay, about uh, Workfront being a, a suite of products. So uh, what we've talked about thus far is the, the intake and the management or workflow piece of uh, the product. But now we're going to take a look at the proofing component. So proofing uh, review process. Uh, our product is called Proof HQ, and what it allows uh, Rick to do is to have this proof generated, and then um, it gets pushed out to those who are assigned to comment on and review it. So here uh, we see the, the proof, uh, in this case for David to, to review. So he clicks proof. It'll load the proof up. David can take a look at this proof. He can resize it. He can add comments to it. Uh, he can make various uh, changes or suggested changes that he would like to see. Um, so in this case, there's a, a little change to the copy. You can expand out that copy, decide where, where he uh, wants to see it placed. But again, 
all done inside of a proofing tool. Think of how proofing is done traditionally. It's a nightmare. Um, you know, things are printed out, I comment on something, and then you comment on the same thing, but your comment is different, comes back to the designer, and they're going, all right, do I go with Jay's comment or do I go with Joe's comment? And it, it just creates, you know, revision nightmares. You drop something on somebody's desk, they're on vacation, you don't know it. I mean, it's it's a cumbersome process. Well, and you've been using it's things like Google Docs or uh, or Word with comments. I mean, it, it you know, which is what a lot of people still use. It's terrible. It's it's you know, and every time you you mark something that's resolved, it spins off another email. So you've got an email box full of emails that say this has been resolved, but you're not talking. Like, what are you talking about? It just it creates more work than it than it uh, takes away. Yeah. So, you know, to to just follow on with that point, I think the biggest benefit to Workfront is there is a single source of truth. So yeah. not buried in somebody's inbox or is this a Google Doc or is or did you send me an email about this? Oh no, this was when we talked in the hall last week. It really comes down to no, there is for any project that comes into our marketing team, there is a place for this to happen. And you talked about adoption. Uh, that's that's one of the primary uh, things that, that influences the success of adoption. If, if the people who are doing the work say, don't call me, don't walk up to me and tell me in the hallway, don't write me a yellow sticky and stick it on my monitor, put it in Workfront, then you know, everybody's happy at the, at the end of the day. So back on proofing, you know, we looked at this one, but uh, we just introduced rich media proofing. Which is so like, uh, like videos and audio clips and stuff like that. Exactly. So you th you think of how cumbersome it is to proof, uh, you know, a static image, one single piece of paper. Uh, think of how and and you produce a ton of videos. You know this. How hard it is to to go through a proofing and approval process on a video. You got to write down the time code. You got to sit there really really carefully and watch it second by second, then pause it real fast. Right. write down the time code, put that in a Google Doc or a Post-it or whatever, and say, okay, add the YouTube card at 12 minutes and 14 seconds is crazy. Uh, you know, I, I did a, a new uh, sizzle reel for my speaking uh, stuff earlier this year, uh, and you know, we had to pull in 25 different clips of me giving speeches in different places and then mark the time codes and we're going to cut it and how does it... It was terrible. It was like the world's worst Google Doc. It was extraordinary. I felt really bad uh, for Simplifilm, the guys we use for that kind of work. Uh, man, I, this would have been extraordinary. So where were you six months ago, Joe? I know. You, either, either we were late or you were ahead of your time, one of the two. We're going to call it both. <laughs> but, you know, I instead, using, using our Proof HQ product, you just you go through the video, you see something you don't like, you pause, you comment on, on that particular yeah. frame, and anybody else who is also reviewing it sees everybody else's comments. So it's, it's much more of a collaborative effort than a, I review it, you review it, she reviews it, and then we've got all kinds of conflicting comments. Uh, HTML files also included in that rich media proofing piece. So, uh, you know, animated, uh, digital ads that are uh, that you may be creating uh, again without having to try and figure out well I, I need to, how do I stop this so that I can comment on the second part of the animation in Proof HQ you just freeze it right there make your comment and it goes back to the designer to correct so really a great productivity tool let's uh, let's talk about one uh, one last piece for David. So David, he, he approved this, he likes how the ad looks, he is now going to publish it uh, or distribute it. So uh, another part of the suite is called Workfront Dam, and so here David is going to upload this uh, final ad uh, to Workfront Dam. Pretty simple process, he clicks it, he decides uh, what area it's going to go into. Um, any other components that he needs to associate with that file, he clicks save, and it is now published and available to be distributed to outside resources as well as internal resources. 
One last look. Uh, let's look at Karen. It's certainly a lot easier than putting it in Dropbox or emailing it or whatever else you're going to use. Yeah, exactly. And you know, you think of the relationship between an agency and a marketing team. You know, great, yeah. great opportunity to share things that way. Make sure everybody has the latest file uh, with all kinds of tracking as to who's accessing it and, and what they're accessing it for. So our last person here, Karen Sterling, she's the CMO or the VP of marketing. Now Karen's not in there doing actual design work. She probably has a number of things that uh, she does on the proofing and approval side, but she really is, you know, her job is, is mainly to manage that marketing team, what they're doing and, and how they're doing. So we provide for Karen, as an example, a, a great calendar view. Uh, she can see what the team is working on. She can see uh, specifics around uh, different kinds of channels, different kinds of assets that are being created. She can drill into any of those kind of at a moment's notice and look at specific, a specific project and what the status of that project is. She can see if it's on track to be completed on time. She can see if it's on track to be uh, done in uh, under budget as well. Uh, there's also some great reports that she can run on an ongoing basis to kind of, again, manage, effectively manage her team. So it really gives her uh, the overall view of her team, what's going on, and identifying any projects or, or any problem areas that she really needs to focus on. That's it. Yeah, it's really powerful, that ability to just at a glance see are we on time? Are we on budget? And, and the budget numbers there are not hard cost, media cost. It's it's time cost, right? So we expect this to be this many hours at this much hourly rate. Uh, and, and here's how many hours of staff time we've actually invested. Exactly. So you you think of also you know the other thing that happens to Karen on a frequent basis is she's got the creative director coming to her saying, I need another designer. I need to hire another designer. And you know without work friends she goes well talk to me. I mean why? Do you, how come you can't? With Workfront, she goes in and says, everybody's at capacity. You do need another designer. Or, hey, I see that there's a couple people here that, you know, the project, the number of projects that they're completing is below. Let's talk about, is it a performance issue? Uh, she can defend her position with the creative director. She can also defend her position as she goes and knocks on the door of the CFO and says, I need another person, and here's the reports that show why. Yeah. That's extraordinary. Because you're right, usually it's anecdote and who can tell a better story. Right, right. Who, who talks the loudest, the fastest? Yes. I've been there. Yeah. I've, I've walked a mile in those shoes. This is really fantastic. I love it. Uh, who, I mean, if you're, gonna, if you're in a marketing organization right, and you've always done things the hard way, I guess I'll get back over to your camera here, uh, and you've done things the, the hard way, uh, it, and now we're saying, okay, let's let's do work front. I suspect that that's a fairly significant cultural change. How do you how do you onboard something like this? I imagine it's got to be pretty pretty tricky. It is. So we we put a lot of emphasis around change management. Uh, we have a great team of consultants that you know we've literally done thousands of these implementations. So it's pretty easy for us to come in and say not only here's how you use the product, but here's how you get adoption of the product. And that's, you know, the, the product's DOA if you, if you can't get people to use yeah. it, obviously. Well, it's got to be everybody, too. You can't have some people using it. You have to have everybody has to use right. it. Right, yeah. Single source of truth can't be partial source of truth. <laughs> that sort of right. invalidates the premise, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, if you're so a big company right, that has a lot of stuff, this is the, the perfect solution, right? If you're doing a lot of marketing executions and you have multiple staff members and you're trading stuff off, this is the perfect solution. If you're, if you're not doing that much stuff and everybody's sitting in one room or you don't have third parties, it's probably more than you need. That's right. Uh, I mean, if you look at this and you say, you know what, we do this with spreadsheets and emails because there's three of us on the team and, and yeah. you know, the close collaboration is easy enough, this is, this is overkill. You know, don't, don't break it if it's working for you. But uh, you know, for a for a team of any size, for for a content team, a creative team, a marketing ops team uh, that has multiple projects and you know a lot of different requesters, uh, 
then this can really uh, make a big difference in kind of controlling that chaos. You ch uh, charge for a monthly fee, it's SaaS based? It is SaaS based, yep. All in the cloud and uh, quite affordable, I must say. I agree. It is actually, in my estimation, remarkably affordable, considering how full-featured and well-integrated the tool is. I, I was actually surprised uh, at, at what the actual price point is. If you want to kick the tires on a piece of this, I absolutely suggest that you do this, especially for all my content marketing and social media marketing uh, friends out there who are doing a lot of eBooks and webinars and, and videos and those kind of things. Grab a free trial. Join his team of extended a free trial to viewers of Marketing Marvels. You can check out the Proof HQ proofing tool, which I use all the time. Love it, love it, love it. Go to proofhq.com slash free dash trial. That's proofhq.com slash free dash trial dot HTML, and you will see how to just provide a little bit of information to get a two-week opportunity to kick the tires on the proofing tool for free. And then obviously, if you like that, and you will, you'll then have the opportunity to uh, get involved in all of the requesting and and uh, project management stuff and all the other great things that Workfront does. Thanks so much, Joe. That's really nice of you to, to make that uh, available to Marketing Marvel's viewers. You bet. How, how did you get involved in this? How did, how did you come to be uh, the, the CMO of such an interesting uh, marketing technology firm? So I don't know how well uh, people outside of Utah know, but the, the tech sector in Utah, which is where we're based, is exploding. I mean, yeah. there's, a, there's a tech company on every corner, uh, literally. Uh, so I've lived in Utah for, for a while, but commuted to my last uh, venture for, for nine years to, to your neck of the woods, to Indianapolis. Uh, and, you know, I latched on to Workfront. I've been a CMO or EVP of marketing for 20 years now. And when I was introduced to Workfront, the thing that excited me about it was, one, we're selling to marketers, which is uh, exciting for a marketer to get to do. Yeah. And, and then second is how extensible it is, because it doesn't really stop with marketers. Uh, we've got a lot of IT customers. Uh, we've got customers in the banking and financial sector. Uh, really, anybody that's managing projects or large amounts of work uh, can utilize the, uh, the tool really, really well. So I was excited about that. The opportunity opened up and uh, kept me a lot closer to home. Yeah, that's good for you. I love that opportunity for sure. Um, what it was interesting about the tool is that it's sort of a it's multiple things put into one suite, as we've talked about, which makes it extremely useful. And also, you can add more things to it, right? I know you have plans to do that, none that we can talk about today, but, but you know, there will be other modules in the Workfront universe that makes it even more uh, useful for people trying to create a lot of work, which is great. Um, but there's a lot of other really interesting marketing technology out there, including many that we've talked about here on the Marketing Marvel show. For you, Joe, as somebody who's been in the space uh, for a long time, been in marketing technology for uh, longer than most. What's what's a marketing marvel for you? What's a, what's a piece of marketing technology like? You know what? That's awesome. So not who is a marketing marvel, but what is a marketing marvel? Is that Either way, I, I, whatever I, you want. Can I answer both questions? You may. You can answer whatever you like, Jeff. So, so the who marketing marvel. Uh, you know, I I love reading and listening. Uh, to senior marketing people that have new and fresh ideas. I think there's yeah. a lot of stuff that's just been kind of reground and regurgitated and you look at it and you go, yep, learned that one six years ago. Yep, learned that one eight years ago. Um, but there are some people out there that are really kind of talking about uh, more innovative thinking around marketing and I just get fascinated by it. Uh, Seth Godin was our keynote speaker at our user uh, conference a couple weeks ago. And, and he's, he's one that I throw in that category. So I'm constantly, if you look at the who around Marketing Marvel, uh, I'm constantly looking for those people that, that really have some innovative ideas. The what, uh, so, you know, MarTech. Uh, our list, our MarTech stack of what we use here at Workfront is probably about, I would guess, is about 15 different products. Uh, I mean, there's just, you know, so many cool things out there that, you know, for a little bit of money, you can you can optimize some portion of what you do in marketing. Um, the, you know, I think the one that stands out for me, we've been using it probably for about two and a half years, is a product called Influitive. 
Oh, I love yeah. those guys. Yeah. I, I, I keynoted their conference uh, not too long ago. Oh, did you? Uh, I did. Yeah. And, and awesome. love awesome. Yeah, love those guys. We we don't. Uh, they're not a sponsor of ours, but we we want to work on that because they're perfect for our influence uh, influencer marketing podcast that we have called Influence Pros. Uh, explain how you use it. Yeah. So so you know I, I think I think the right target for a CMO is to turn everything that you do relative to marketing. Uh, the the end goal is to to bring customers on board that turn into advocates. Yeah. Uh, I mean, advocacy marketing is just so powerful, and I think most marketers know how to do advocacy marketing, but don't know how to really start and and manage that process. And that's what Influitive lets us do: is you know to create a a website, to issue challenges, to provide rewards to our customers that advocate on our behalf, and it just provides a structure around it. So. Um, you know, I think the the convergence of marketing and customer success is actually the the next thing that we're going to see really, really powerfully, and uh, and that's what. If only somebody are. wrote a book about that. That would have been amazing. If yes. Taking care of that. Yes. Exactly. We are singing out of the same hymnal, my friend. Right. Uh, and and I tell you, the thing about Influitive, which is cool, is that they're so smart to focus on B two B software. Right. It's like you know. There's lots of solutions out there for consumer-facing advocacy and influencer kind of platforms. Um, uh, Zuberance is one that, that we like an awful lot that, that is one of our, our partners. Uh, but, but Influitive is like, look, we're going to focus on this part of the business and do it really, really well for companies like yours, and, and they really have it buttoned up. I like them an awful lot. So good I, you know, I also think that they don't uh, – it's not a heavy lift to, yeah. to kind of use and, and get implemented. I've seen some other ones where – I mean, you really have to twist somebody's arm and talk them into doing something for you. And, and this just provides a structure where, you know, you can figure out what motivates those customers to advocate on your behalf. You can track it. You can set up competitions, and you're off to the races. Yeah, no kidding. we got to get them on the show. They'd be a good, uh, a good participant in Marketing Marvels and look under, under the hood. I do uh, Joe, think it would be fair, yeah. though, if you ask them, you know, what technology they love, that they would reciprocate. Well, we could certainly we could certainly tip them off. But only be fair to, uh, to that opportunity. Yeah, I think that's the the idea. Uh, thanks so much for for being on on the show, Joe. Thanks to everybody at at Workfront for uh, your partnership and and the great work that you're doing. I, I cannot wait uh, for some of our viewers and and fans to to get into the Workfront universe. It's going to change the way they do business, and I mean that quite literally. Uh, next uh, next show, let's see. When are we going to do the next one? Uh, actually, pretty soon. We've got a new episode um, of Marketing Marvels coming up pretty soon, episode five, uh, and it's going to be with the guys at Zignal Labs, uh, who we love. They are really, really creating a better mousetrap around uh, listening and real-time market intelligence. It combines social listening with television listening, with print listening, uh, everything in one place, real-time. Here's what's going on in your space. Fantastic stuff. So Tim Hayden, who's their CMO, is going to be on on uh, Marketing Marvels next. Excited about about that show and and uh, looking under the hood of their solution because it does some pretty crazy stuff. Uh, remind everybody one more time, Joe. Thanks about the uh, free trial of Proof HQ. Two weeks go to proofhq.com/free-trial.html uh, to uh, spend a couple weeks hanging out with the ultimate proofing tool, Proof HQ. Joe, when are we going to get together? We got to we got to do this in real life one of these days. Let's do it. We've shared a stage before. Let's do that again. I know. Let's do that again. That's a good idea. I you know I fly through Utah a lot uh, to get to the West Coast from from out here. So next time I'm just going to change my flights and we're just going to hang out. Good. Sounds sounds great. Thanks, Thanks so much. So much. For really appreciate it. Yeah. Good to see you. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye.